Hello everyone. Welcome back to What If Izuku Was a Leveling Hero? Be sure to like, share, and check out the author, AC1 Ermai. Again, the author's first language isn't English. I can only catch so many spelling mistakes. Also, this story is not yet completed, so this will be season 1 of this, so be sure to check out the links in the description down below. And with that let's begin. Chapter 21 Izuku Izuku, who hadn't noticed it until now, turned to look at who was calling him. Sujimoto saw. He looked behind Sujimoto. There were people busy rescuing the raid team. It seemed he was too focused on the battle, until he didn't realize that the people had already gathered behind him. Izuku looked back at Sujimoto, who was looking at him, his eyes staring at him, asking for an explanation of what had just happened. We're going to need a long conversation once we get back. I know, but more than that, how is the condition of the raid team? For now, let's get out of here. Yes, Izuku followed Sujimoto out along with the rescue team. Outside the gate is more crowded than before they entered the gate. There is an ambulance preparing to take those injured immediately to the hospital, as well as the reporter's car. It can be seen from the logo affixed to the car. As soon as they came out, the camera started flashing, taking pictures of them. One of the reporters stepped up to ask about what happened in the dungeon to one of the hunters in the rescue team, but was blocked by one of the bureau agents. For the time being, their priority is to take the raid team to the hospital as soon as possible, while the bureau agent will deal with other matters. They arrived at the hospital. All the raid team was seriously injured, but only Ikiru was in critical condition. It has been an hour since he got into the operating room. Izuku was waiting with several agents. When the doctor came out, Izuku was the first to stand up and immediately asked how Ikiru was doing. Doctor? How's his condition? His injuries were much worse than we thought. His arms and legs were almost destroyed, especially his spine was seriously injured, which caused some of his motor nerves to stop functioning. We are not sure if he will be able to walk normally from now on. It was honestly a stroke of luck that he was still alive. For now, his critical condition has now passed, and we are not sure when he will wake up. For a moment. What the doctor just said made the heart that heard it drop instantly. A harsh reality just said is tantamount to a life sentence. Izuku's face instantly darkened. The light had long since left his eyes, leaving a muddy look filled with anger at his inability to save his comrades. With the heavy atmosphere surrounding him, Izuku ventured to try to meet Ikiru. Can I go see him? Sure. But please don't make a noise. The patient still needs to rest. Okay, thank you doctor. After the doctor left, Izuku and several agents went to Ikiru's room with the nurse guide. In the room, Ikiru was lying helplessly with various medical equipment attached. His figure, which has always looked tough, is now lying helplessly on the hospital bed. Izuku sat down by Ikiru's bed. His head lowered and his fists clenched so hard that his hands turned white and blood slowly dripped from between his fingers. His mind raced to think of the terrible events that befell his comrades. I'm so sorry Ikiru, son if only I got there sooner. Looking at the blood dripping from Izuku's hand, Sujimoto who came to accompany him patted him on the shoulder, trying to calm him down a little. Don't blame yourself, it's not you to blame here Izuku. We are also responsible for this. If only we had known earlier, this accident would have happened. Looking at Izuku who was just silent without giving a response, Sujimoto decided to leave him alone, letting him calm himself down. Judging from how close Izuku is to the raid team member, this incident is a big hit to him. I'll leave you here, meet me at the bureau office when you're calmed down, and please don't be too burdened with this. Izuku stayed where he was for almost 30 minutes without leaving Ikiru's side. After making up for a while, Izuku stood up, deciding to leave. He looked at Ikiru once more before leaving. Ikiru said I'm leaving first. Get well soon. Izuku walked out of the room and headed to check the condition of his other colleagues. He first went to Daichai's room, then Katsuhito's room, 
and finally Kyoko's room. Daichai and Katsuhito are still unconscious due to the anesthetic, both of whom received a lot of injuries from the incident, and only Kyoko is still conscious since the wounds are less than the others. Izuku reached her room, he knocked on the door. Hearing the knocking sound, Kyoko looked at the door and saw Izuku standing there. She then let him in and told him to sit down next to her bedside. How are you Kyoko-san? As you can see, I still need a few days to fully recover. That's a relief. sujimoto san just came by a few minutes ago. I heard that you are visiting Mikuru. So how is he? When Kyoko asked that, Izuku looked away. His face darkened as he thought of Ikiru, who was lying on the bed unconsciously. But Kyoko just smiled bitterly at Izuku's reaction. Judging from your reaction, it must be bad, right? I'm sorry. If only I could come sooner. Izuku. Kyoko took Izuku's hand. He raised his head to look at Kyoko's face. It's not your fault that this happened. You worked so hard to save us. We managed to get out of there alive. It's all thanks to you, and we're so grateful for that. At least you should be grateful for it. But I... Izuku, I know how you feel. I'm also upset that my healing did not have a significant effect on Ikiru. I kept thinking that if my support magic and healing power were stronger, I might be able to help the team. Tears began to fall from her face, and the mixed feelings she was holding back now leaked out. Unlike Izuku who has always concealed his feelings, she can't resist her feelings. Although Kyoko tried to calm Izuku down, she also tried to calm herself down. The words she said to Izuku were also words for herself as well. Izuku also noticed it. But he chose to remain silent and let Kyoko cry to her heart's content, waiting until she calmed down. After a few minutes, Kyoko finally calmed down. Izuku who was by her side still holding her hand until now. Sorry, it's embarrassing to show you this side of myself. That's okay. Sometimes you need to bring out your emotions at least once. Isn't you who told me that? Kyoko then smiled softly. She didn't know that her words would come back to her one day. She then laughed, lifting a little of the weight off her chest. You're right. It's a bad thing to hold your emotions for too long. Thanks to you, I feel a little better. But I didn't do anything though. Just being here with me and talking to you is the help I need right now. Thank you again, Izuku. Um, yes, you're welcome. Izuku accompanied Kyoko until the evening. He then left her to let her rest, then headed to the bureau to meet with Sujimoto. Izuku arrived at the bureau office. Sujimoto was already waiting for him inside his office. When he entered the room Izuku was quite surprised to see the director himself waiting for him with Sujimoto. Izuku looked at the two of them with confused eyes. You are here, sit down. After bowing slightly to the two of them, he sat down beside Sujimoto. You must be wondering why the chairman is here. Is it because of what happened before? Yes, but not only that. Fun. Sujimoto looked at Matsumoto. Then he nodded in agreement. I've talked to the chairman, and we are thinking about promoting you as an S-rank hunter. It was a very surprising thing for Izuku. His brain tried to process it, but got stuck because of the shock he received. His mind was still stuck thinking about today's incident. But with the shocking announcement from Sujimoto, his head immediately stopped working. To be promoted to S-rank, a hunter must have a certain amount of mana and real abilities. Hunters must also obtain promotion approval from at least three hunterous ranks. Seeing that Izuku froze in place, Sujimoto patted him on the shoulder and called his name trying to wake him up, Izuku. Izuku was shocked, and he was able to come back to his senses. Yes, sorry what you said just now. Huh. I told you that we would promote you as an S-rank hunter. Sujimoto sighed after seeing Izuku's reaction. It is rare to see Izuku lose his calm under any circumstances. He is usually calm and cautious, but also sometimes very calculated. It's great to see that Izuku can react like that, but it's not the time for it. Izuku already tried to think about it once again. But there was one thing that bothered him. 
But isn't this too sudden? There is a reason for it, Matsumoto. Izuku looked at Matsumoto with confused eyes and wondered what the reason was. Matsumoto then began to explain the reason to him. First, after Japan announced the existence of gates and dungeons, and also the monsters inside, it brought a wave of changes in the world. Japan was the first to announce it, and was followed by the Americans and the British, and then the whole world also began to announce it. And when the Americans made the announcement, they also posted a list of S-ranked hunters. They followed that other countries followed. Although we were the ones who started it, it seemed like we were the ones who were left behind. Matsumoto handed two document files to Izuku. Chairman this. This is an S-rank hunter list owned by other countries. America has the most S-rank hunters. They have tens rank in total. And this one is the S-rank list we have and the list of candidates who will be promoted to the S-rank. Izuku looked at the documents of the S-rank candidates. There were ten candidates in total, and he saw Todoroki's name and his name was at the top of the list. But why is my name at the top of the list? About that, you are a special case. Based on our observations, you have better growth potential than any hunter, and seeing the raid records you completed proves your potential as an S-rank hunter. What happened this time is a pity, but with it, we can confirm your ability. Matsumoto. That's right. And just by looking at the number of creatures you can summon, there is no doubt that your ability is equivalent to the S rank, and maybe even more. Sujimoto. Izuku was silent once again, but this time he was lost in thought. He was confused as to whether or not to accept it. This is indeed a great opportunity for him. But after the chairman mentioned today's incident, the feeling as if he was taking advantage of the accidents of his colleagues made him feel worse. Sujimoto also realized this just by looking at Izuku's silent reaction. He then tried to give him one more push. By the way, Ikiru-san also agrees with this. Okiru-san okay, too. Sujimoto nodded at Izuku's handling, then handed him one more document. The document contained a proposal for a promotional application that had Ikiru's signature on it. A few days before the raid, Ikiru-sen visited me and handed me this document. Is that so? Izuku once again had a dilemma with the decision he had to make. His mind worked so hard that wrinkles slowly formed on his face. With his current state of mind, it seemed impossible to make a decision right away. One day wasn't enough to think things through. Izuku decided to put his complicated thoughts aside at this point. Can I have time to think about it? Of course, there is no need to rush. Take your time and think about it slowly. Thank you for your consideration. It's okay. I know it's a hard day for you. You'd better go home and rest. After getting permission to leave, Izuku stood up and bowed lightly to the two before leaving the room. Well... Then please excuse me. Seeing Izuku leaving the room, Sujimoto took a deep breath and then looked at Matsumoto. Sir, didn't you use this incident to convince him it was too much? You know how the heroes in each story grow up. They overcome their crises and become stronger through it. But still, he's just a kid. Sujimoto, please consider our current situation. Only with this incident, people's trust in us will be reduced. We need heroes to return people's trust in us. But sir, Sujimoto, please don't doubt my decision. I made this decision with our common good in mind. Although Matsumoto didn't speak loudly, the aura emanating from him was able to exert pressure on Sujimoto. Sujimoto couldn't fight Matsumoto's decision because of their difference in position. He could only lower his head and follow his orders like a subordinate, swallowing his anger. He lowered his head towards Matsumoto and immediately replied without further resistance. Yes, sir, I understand. The next morning on TV news, the news show reported on the recent incident at the gate that appeared near the construction site. An incident occurred at the gate located on the construction site at 4 p.m. Several hunters were seen entering the gate and coming out with their bodies covered in wounds. Regardless, the situation can be controlled quickly, 
and the dungeon is closed thanks to the quick action of the Hunter Bureau agents who soon arrive at the scene. People gathered around watching the news and talking about this incident. Isn't it scary? What about it? Did you see their injuries? They were inhumane, very scary. How can a person survive after such an injury? But I heard that hunters have a higher recovery rate than ordinary people. Aren't they exaggerating? Maybe some of them have a recovery quirk. People started arguing about the news broadcast on TV. Each of them has its own opinion. Some agree and some don't. As Matsumoto estimated, most opinions doubted the performance of the hunters. Because they are used to heroes' performance and dealing with problems, they trust heroes more than hunters. Izuku, who was also watching the news on his mobile phone, then turned his phone off after reading his comments. Their criticism made Izuku feel bad. Once again, he remembered the accident that happened to Ikiru and his team. His expression slowly began to wrinkle the more he thought about the incident. This won't do. Izuku stood up from his bed and then headed to a certain location. He contacted Sujimoto telling him that he would be away for a few days. He arrived in front of Tokyo Tower and then walked into the dungeon of the Devil's Castle. The flames immediately greeted him as soon as he entered. Regardless of the view of the surrounding ruined city, Izuku went straight to the 76th floor. The devil was already waiting for him by the entrance. Without waiting any further, he took out his dagger and then summoned his troops. Behind him stood his shadow warriors, Igris, Iron, Tank, Boka, and Tusk who were the new faces in his army. With his new army form, he rushed into the demon crowd, ready to carry out another massacre in this dungeon. Chapter 21-5 And, hey guys, this chapter is just an interlude story that I want to add as an addition and maybe a continuation of the story. Since it was too much to include in the previous chapter, I made it into a separate chapter. But don't worry my updated schedule is still as usual. Happy reading. Before Izuku entered the demon castle, he asked Sujimoto if he could get certain items from the workshop. Sujimoto then introduced him to the head of the workshop Akiyama Iwa. He was in charge of handling the weapons of the hunters, both in terms of repair and manufacture. He was also known as Awakening with special abilities that specialized in production. All the weapons he made were used by high-rank hunters, such as a rank and above. The workshop also has several workers who specialize in this area. More than 50 people work in the workshop, and not all of them are awakened. Some of them are ordinary people, and some don't even have any quirks. Leaving that aside, the results of their work are very good. Since the lives of the hunters depended on the weapons they used, the workers could not be half-hearted in making the weapons for the hunters. If the weapons made are not up to standard and have deficiencies, a person's life can be in danger because of it. These are all well known among workers. Akiyama has high standards for every weapon the workshop makes, and along with a tough but meticulous personality, the items he makes are the best among the best. After making an appointment, Izuku went to the workshop in the old bureau office. The workshop is located on the fifth floor of the underground building. The workshop itself looks great with each section based on the items created. Izuku walked into the workshop. One of the workers approached him, asked him what he needed, then took him to where Akiyama was. As he walked in, he could see all the workers busy doing their jobs. Some were forging swords, others polishing them, and some were even making support items such as rings, bracelets, or robes enchanted with magic spells. From afar, he could see a sturdy man wearing a headband and forging tools. They approached the man, and the worker who guided Izuku called him the boss. It made Izuku sure that the man in front of him was Akiyama Iwao, the head of this workshop. Boss, there is someone who wants to see you. Akiyama looked at Izuku. Izuku smiled while making eye contact. So you're the one Sujimoto's talking about? Yes. Let's talk somewhere else. It's too hot and noisy here. Yes, let's go. Akiyama then took them to the lounge to chat. The tea has already been served to the two of them. Akiyama told Izuku to sit down, 
He then asked Izuku why he wanted to see him. So why do you want to see me? There is some item I need. What kind of item exactly? I need the item that has fire resistance, such as a cloak or something. A fire resistance item. Is it difficult to get? No. It's the most common item here actually. Really? Yes, please follow me. I'll show you some that we had. Izuku thought it would be difficult to get the item since he couldn't find it in the system's shop. They headed to the showroom, where they displayed all the items made by the workshop. Things are displayed in glass cabinets. Items such as armor, weapons and accessories are neatly arranged. Akiyama began to explain each item displayed there. Izuku heard his explanation while looking around at the items on display. His eyes fell on the dagger on display. He looked at it and compared it with the dagger he used. Akiyama-san can see this dagger. Akiyama took out the dagger that Izuku pointed at and handed it to Izuku. He then held it and started playing with it. He made some attacking moves with a dagger in his hand. The dagger itself is inferior to the Night Killer dagger. Its stats are most similar to those of Rosaka's fangs. Akiyama, who was watching him, began to observe him from the moment he was holding and playing with the dagger. You're pretty good at handling daggers, aren't you? Well, the dagger is my main weapon, and I've been using it since the beginning, so yes, I see. May I see your weapon? Oh, sure. Izuku took out the Night Killer dagger from his inventory. Akiyama was impressed by the dagger that appeared in Izuku's hand. Spatial magic. I think your job is a warrior or assassin. I heard that you don't have a quirk. But are you sure you don't have one? Unfortunately not. It's just one of my skills, and I'm an assassin. Akiyama was silent for a while. He looked at Izuku with a look of doubt. But after seeing Izuku's reaction, he immediately excluded him. Akiyama then hit Izuku on the back with a laugh. Ha ha ha. As Sujimoto said you're an interesting person. Izuku seems to struggle with Akiyama's attitude towards him. But he can still smile, even if it's awkward. Izuku then handed the Night Killer dagger in his hand to Akiyama for assessment. As soon as he touched it, Akiyama widened his eyes. T this. Where did you get this from? I got it from the dungeon. See, can I borrow your dagger for a moment? Like a child who found a new toy. Akiyama looked at Izuku with a hungry look. He looked very excited. It was completely the opposite of when he was in front of the workshop workers. Izuku, on the other hand, was at a loss as to how to respond. At first glance, he seemed to see himself excited while researching quirks and monsters. But he quickly erased that thought and then spoke. Is there something wrong with my dagger? Wrong? How could this masterpiece be called wrong? This dagger is so beautiful, I can feel the details of the workmanship just by holding it. The balance and length of the blades are perfect. Tell me what material this dagger is made of. Seeing Hiroki's excitement, Izuku thought to himself, So this is what others feel when they see me. Somehow I feel bad now. I have to apologize to them. Um, Akiyama-san. Akiyama, who kept babbling his excitement, stopped when Izuku called his name. Ah, oh, sorry, am I talking too much? Akiyama scratched the back of his head awkwardly, but his eyes were still fixed on Izuku's dagger. Izuku somehow understood his interest in weapons, just like he had an interest in quirks. Izuku decided to give up and let Hiroki borrow his dagger. It's okay, you can borrow my dagger. Really? Izuku just nodded in response. Ha ha ha. Well as a thank you, you can choose one item here for free. I'm sure it's the first time you've bought something from the workshop. So I'll give you a discount on your next visit. Really? Can I do it? Of course, just choose the one you like. Thank you very much Akiyama-san then. Izuku decided to take the wind robe item and buy a nameless ring with water attributes. He bought two items as preparation for entering the demon castle. The higher he climbed, the stronger and fiercer the flames became. His own body wouldn't be able to handle the heat of the field, so he needed items to protect him from the fire. His preparations are now complete. 
and he is ready to enter the dungeon. After telling Sujimoto that he will leave for a few days, he went to Tokyo Tower, where the entrance to the Demon Castle dungeon was located. He walked in without hesitation. He was determined to finish what he had to do to the end. Chapter 22 Walls Boom Unilateral massacres took place in every place where Izuku and his soldiers went. The sound of fighting was accompanied by the explosions and screams of every demon they killed. It has been two days since he entered the demon castle. He rose at a terrifying speed. With the newly joined army of high orcs and the orb of avarice in the hands of Tusk, they have no problem climbing the demon castle. Notifications have kept popping up before his eyes since the battle began. Izuku looked at the battlefield where Tusk was wiping his enemy using his fire magic. He had analyzed the battle from afar to match the fighting style of the high orcs with his current army. What a tremendous power. Although he was holding the orb of avarice, his ability should have been nerfed after becoming a shadow. The size of the orb of avarice seems to be changing according to users. I have to leave it for Tusk for a while. Meanwhile, Izuku checks his status while waiting for his soldiers to finish. Status. Name. Izuku. Level. 81. Job. Shadow Monarch. Title. The one who overcame adversary plus one more. HP. 24406. MP 519. Fatigue. Zero. Stats. Strength. 186. Vitality. 145. Agility. 175. Intelligence. 192. Sense. 126. Physical damage reduction. 46. Equipped. Remaining points. 0. Skills. Passive skills. Unknown LV. Max. Perseverance LV1. Advanced Dagger Arts LV2. Active skills. Sprint LV. Max. Vital Strike LV. Max. Bloodlust LV2. Dagger Throw LV2. Stealth LV2. Dominators Touch LV2. The number of shadow soldiers he could extract and save increased after his intelligence status increased. Shadows can be extracted. 128 date 825. Shadow can save. 128 d 160. Seeing how many demons he had defeated to this point, he should be able to fill the void in his warriors if he could turn them into his shadow. But because of the contaminated magic, he couldn't do that. Since he entered the dungeon that day, he got another quest. Normal quest. Collect Demon Souls. Part 2. The Monarch of the Demons Baron lives on the highest floor of the Demon Castle. Eliminate Baron and collect his soul. Quest completion requirements. Defeat the Demon King. Reward. 1. Highest quality runestone. 2. Stata bonus plus 30. 3. Hidden rewards. High quality runestone. Shadow Exchange Job-specific skills can be obtained by solving runes. Just looking at the gift itself is bigger than before. Even so, the final goal is upstairs. The last material for making the holy water of life. Purified blood of the Demon King. This was the reason he climbed up the Demon Castle at such an insane speed. After such a long battle, he felt that it was inefficient to move into one large group. He then decided to divide his soldiers into six different teams, each with a stronger shadow as the leader. Tusk, Igris, Iron, Tank, Buruka, and a group led by High Orcs. They were given two orders. One was to eliminate the enemy they were facing, and the second was to notify Izuku once they found the entry permit. Not long after Izuku dismissed his army, experience notice appeared in front of him. But because he was on the top floor, High-level demons began to appear, and normal-class warriors had a hard time dealing with them. So he had to constantly use potions to recover his magic power, so he wouldn't lose his soldiers. This continued for several days, and as a result, not only leveled up quickly, but his soldiers managed to level up ten times since the last time he saw them. He still has twenty floors left to conquer, but he is currently stuck on the eightieth floor for two days because he has not been able to find the entry pass. It's been two days since I reached the 80th floor, but I still haven't found the entry pass. Is there a powerful enemy somewhere? 
Just as he was deep in thought, his mana was suddenly drained at a rapid rate. It was from the team that Iron led. Since the regeneration speed of his soldiers couldn't keep up, the enemy must have defeated them. It's unexpected that there is a demon strong enough to defeat Iron. Izuku thought about checking the situation there, but called back his soldiers because his mana ran out quickly. The next day, because of the continuous ambush, the deployed soldiers were pulled back. Izuku kept observing the situation constantly while analyzing the enemy's attack pattern. But he felt something was strange. Based on how Izuku deployed his soldiers after the enemy attacked the High Orcs team, they attacked the Igris team, but missed the Tusk team and attacked Baruka's team instead. The enemy seems to be deliberately targeting an enemy they can win. It means that the enemy has enough intelligence to detect the weakness of their enemy. If they deliberately target the Baruka team, the next target must be the tank team. Izuku looked in the direction the tank team was going. He then headed there to monitor the situation and meet the enemy who had destroyed his soldiers. He hides behind the ruins of buildings near his army while suppressing his presence and hiding his figure with the skill stealth. Not long after, the armed demon army approached the tank team. One demon noble and three demon knights. Gua'a. The battle began, and one of the demon knights sliced tank's neck like butter without any problems. He continued to attack the tank, but his regeneration could not keep up. Seeing his soldiers being pushed back, Izuku decided to show himself. The demon knight noticed Izuku's presence. They attacked him. Izuku kicked the first demon knight, who attacked him directly, killed him, and hit the other two, leaving the demon noble alone. I wonder if monsters can also feel fear. The demon trembled with fright at Izuku's presence. He grinned at the demon. But now I'm sure. Even so, the demon fought back and attacked Izuku by stabbing him in the forehead, neck, and heart with precision. Its power can destroy buildings behind Izuku. Inside the demon castle, the grade demons are divided into D-rank low-grade demons, C-rank middle-grade demons, B-rank high-grade demons, A-rank high-grade demons, A-plus-rank ancient demons, and noble demons as rank mini-bosses. While dodging his attack, Izuku gripped the Baruka dagger under his cloak. When he saw the opportunity, Izuku then cut off the sword the demon was holding and grabbed his face. When he was about to stop the demon's face, the demon immediately gave up. I give up, I give up. Izuku stopped his attack and narrowed his eyes after hearing the demon's voice. Are you? The demon could do nothing but let the mask be removed. A girl? I... I'm sorry, we were wrong. P please spare my life. Izuku froze for a moment realizing he was touching a girl's face. But after remembering the person in front of him, was a demon managed to come back to his senses. You attacked my soldiers then, and now you apologize. Behind him stood a team of tanks angry over the attacks of the demons who were now their captives. I committed a big sin. But in our clan's orders, we must protect this area. We can't just sit idly by and let the bast. Ack, I mean. People go wild and kill other demons like ants. Please forgive me. Is it okay for you to beg for your life from the person who killed your man? The knight's task is to protect their master. I'm sure the knights will be happy if I survive. Sweat formed on Izuku's forehead. He was a little confused because it was the first time he encountered such a selfish demon. Izuku retracted his gaze from her for a moment and looked at the dagger in his hand. After seeing her, I lost the will to kill her. Seeing a gap. The demon took this opportunity to stab Izuku's back, but was stopped by the tusk's magic shield. Izuku glanced at the demon with a hint of mana exuding it. What do you think you're doing? The demon girl immediately kowtowed as soon as her sneak attack was unsuccessful. If you save my life, I will give you whatever you want. Izuku was again puzzled by the attitude shown by the demon in front of him. I don't know if she is shameless or just optimistic. Izuku then orders Tusk to use gravity magic to lift the demon from the ground. Entry pass, can you get it? The E-entry pass is protected by our clan. 
If you can take me home unharmed, I can give it to you. I wondered why it didn't appear, but I didn't expect it to be kept elsewhere for protection. I even know where the entrance to the higher floor is stored. I can guide you if you can guarantee the safety of my life and the clan. So tempting. The demon girl struggled in the air while talking frantically. After speaking, Izuku doubted that he could believe her words. He walked slowly towards her. The demon girl's face turned red when she saw Izuku's face right in front of hers. Izuku looked straight into her eyes, and then she activated her bloodlust skill. Ring. Skill. Bloodlust activated. Can I trust you? The high pressure pressing on the demon girl made her face dark, and her face wet with cold sweat. I? I'm not lying. I? I'm telling the truth. Her voice trembled with fright. She was frightened and told the truth. Tusk released gravity magic and let it fall even though she was still shaking. Okay, if you can give me an admission pass, I will leave this place with peace of mind. T thanks. But first, just who are you guys? After a few minutes of calming down, the demon girl finally introduced herself. I'm Lady Essel, the eldest daughter of the Radier clan. Our clan is. I didn't ask about that. What Izuku was curious about was their existence. He has encountered several intelligent monsters. He asked the same question and ended up with the same answer. He had little expectation that the demons in this dungeon would give a different answer. Do you constantly hear voices in your head to kill humans? Essel tilted her head in confusion. After a moment of silence, she finally realized what Izuku was asking. No, but we heard a different voice. To protect the area where we live. Finally, a different answer. The purpose of this monster is different from that of the gate monster. The purpose of the gate monster is to kill humans, while this underground monster is to protect the dungeon. Then does that mean I'm like a gate monster to these monsters? When did you start hearing those voices? When we open our eyes here, Izuku widened his eyes as soon as he heard what Essel said. If she said they heard a sound when they opened their eyes here, it means that these demons used to live elsewhere. This can be a clue to know the nature of the system. Then where were you before opening your eyes here? On the demon world. Before we knew it, we ended up here. What are you doing in the demon world? W at R. W three R hash P R three par and nine fo R W R. War? War against who? Yes. It was a war against such a powerful enemy that all the demons had to gather together. Suddenly Essel's words went out of control and her eyes began to distort as if she had experienced some kind of distortion. As if she was being possessed by something, she started babbling words differently than before. You have exceeded the amount of information allowed. The conversation will be interrupted. You have exceeded the amount of information allowed. The conversation will be interrupted. You have exceeded the amount of information allowed. The conversation will be interrupted. Again, the same thing happened to Boruka. The system forcibly blocked the conversation. So far, Izuku has only collected information that only ends up at the same dead end. But by talking to Essel, he can provide some kind of clue. Level up, instant dungeons, quests, rewards and penalties. Since everything is like a video game, it's not strange that monsters have a background like video games. Who is the powerful enemy you mentioned? Let's hash a dollar percent or end at X. Essel tried to answer Izuku's question, but the information in her head seemed to be too much. Her face went dark, and she fainted instantly. Essel. Izuku rushed to catch her just before her body hit the ground. He then lay her down and and used his cloak as a pillow. Looking at Essel's faint face, Izuku began to collect the information he had just obtained and combine it with the pieces of information he had. The system has reacted violently to the identity of the enemy. If that enemy has transcendental power and tries to influence me or the earth for some reason, then the enemy that the demon fights. Maybe they are the key. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a Discord down below.
Be sure to aim for the stars, drink plenty of water, and for us to cause chaos. With that take care until next we see each other again.